Hello, it's Alden. In this tutorial, we're gonna take two images and turn it into this 3D scene. In the last tutorial, a lot of you asked for something a little slower and a little more in depth. So this tutorial is a little bit long, but it takes us through the process of making a shot from beginning to end. We're gonna cover taking an image and turning it into a 3D scene, modeling props from images, working with materials, UV projections, some 3D modeling, lighting, and setting up your render with an EXR sequence. And a bonus section about using Mixamo to add a character to your scene. Then we're gonna take everything into After Effects for some compositing. Everything I use in this tutorial is free for you to download. Links are in the description below so you can download these images and follow along in real time. I downloaded all these images from Pexels, which is a royalty-free website where you can download a ton of video and images. It's great for stock imagery, but also textures and architecture like this to build a 3D scene. We're gonna start with this image of a hallway. We're gonna start in FSpy, which is a free software that allows you to line up the X, Y, and Z axes of an image to come up with the focal length for a camera and to line up all your axes of the image in Blender, which makes modeling super easy. There's also a plugin on FSpy's website that allows you to import this information directly into Blender. So make sure you download and have that installed into Blender. But first, let's open up FSpy. Here we are in FSpy, so I'm just gonna drag the image image in and it'll pop right up. I turn off this dim image checkbox here. I think sometimes it can be helpful to see these lines a little bit better, but I ignore it. So with this image, we definitely have a good Y axis. That's the forward and backward axis in Blender and Z because we also have the vertical lines on these tiles here. So I'm going to change the X to Z and let's line up these axes, hit shift to zoom in. Choose a point here. Ideally, you want to choose places that are in multiple different depths and areas of your image. Like if I were to just choose a bunch right in this corner, it's not going to be as accurate as if I put these lines all over the place. And then we have this cursor. And so we can just check our work and make sure that all of these vanishing points are lining up. And this looks pretty good. If you ever get to this point and your z-axis is pointing down instead of up, you can go up here and change your z to negative z and that should correct everything. I'm going to put the cursor here because this cursor is going to be the origin point in Blender. So I'm going to set it on a corner just because that's going to make it easy later. And then we also have this reference distance. It's set to default. I usually set this on my own. So you can basically line up on one of your axes a distance and tell it uh, for scale. So if I choose Z, move these little lines here, we're going to say that wall is four meters. Sure, that's the default. So we're going to go with that. And this should be perfect for getting set up in Blender. So just save this, open up Blender. We can select everything, delete it. You need to turn on the FSpy plugin here, which you can download from the FSpy website and install it here. And then you just go file import FSpy. And that is going to bring in a camera that has the image as a background image. And you'll notice that this world origin is exactly where that cursor was in FSpy. And now all our X, Y, and Z axes are going to line up perfectly so we can model this hallway. Shift A. For a new mesh, we're going to go start with a plane, rotate it, R, ro then Y to rotate along the Y axis, 90, enter, and let's just start lining this up. Tab, select just the edges. So up at the top of this hallway, I can see that it's sort of a 45 degree angle there. I'm going to do that in a second, but first I think I'm going to set then. The origin's going to be about like actually halfway there. And E to extrude along the x axis. Same thing about halfway. And E to extrude down the floor. To see the image better, click on your camera, go to the background images, set it to front, and then you can see it in front of your mesh. Also, a setting you can change here is when you're in the viewport, you change this to Metcap and then random. You are all of your new, like if you put in 
new meshes, they're all going to have a slightly different color, which can be a little helpful. If you have two windows open, you do have to set that for both windows. And this is it. It's a, it's a hallway, so it's pretty simple. But let's take these two, hit Control b to bevel it. Try to get that line up. Perfect. So now that we have this mesh that reflects this geometry, let's open up a shader editor. Give this a new material. Bring your image in. Set it to color. Change this to the material preview. Obviously, that's way off, but we're going to use some modifiers to make everything line up. So we are going to add a subdivision surface modifier, but first I'm just going to add the UV project and then you can see why we need that subdivision surface modifier. So add UV project, your UV map, UV map, and then object is that camera. And one thing we have to do is put this aspect ratio to the dimensions of the photo itself. So the properties of this, um, these are the dimensions. So I'm just going to put that in right here. As you can see, this is still way off. Um, and this is where that subdivision modifier comes into play. So subdivision obviously adds all of this information to your mesh geometry, but we want to set it to simple. It's going to keep the same shape, but just add more subdivision within that shape. So if we set this to five, five, and then set it in front of the UV project modifier, suddenly everything lines up pretty well. In your camera, there's a, in your viewport display, there's a setting called Passepartout. I like to turn that up just because that turns off everything that's outside of your frame. And I just find that helpful when I'm referencing all this stuff. Now, the next step is going to be to work on this material a little bit more. So let's change this to rendered mode. I'm actually gonna set this to cycles. GPU compute. Let's add a light, area light. We want to mimic the lighting that is here in the picture itself. That's going to give us the best, most realistic results, and that is a bright backlit uh, light there. So that's a little much. Let's start there. You're going to see all this reflection isn't really giving us much, and that's because this is just an image. So let's give it a little more detail by taking this image and plugging it into normal. Shift A, bump. Set the normal or that to height. As you can see, this is giving us some geometry based on the RGB values of the image. It's extremely intense, so let's turn the height down and also the strength down. Let's start here. Add another light this side, just so we can also see this environment. If we change the color to one, we can see a lot more sort of what's happening. Let's just do a kind of red and blue for now. This is just going to let us see what aspects of this image texture are reflecting what. The other thing we're going to do is add to the roughness. So same thing, color to roughness, shift a color ramp. And then if you have your node wrangler add on, you can control shift click any node in here. And that's what's going to preview. So this color ramp makes the image black and white. And essentially, the black areas are 100% reflective, white areas are 0% reflective, and the gray is somewhere in between. So if we were to think about this tile, the grout is not going to be reflective. So we're actually going to turn this around so that the grout is white, so it's not reflective. Um, then we have this black area here is going to be pulling from these light values, which makes sense because that's what's actually being reflected in the image itself. And let's start with something crazy like this, and then we'll dial it back. Go back here. Uh, we can see this place looks completely wet because it is so reflective. So we're going to pull that down. 
looking a little better. Also, if we change this color from black to more of a gray, that's just going to bring down the intensity of that reflectiveness in a way that looks a little more realistic. I think that looks pretty good. It's decent. It's decent. And there are a couple other things we can do here, which is this floor, the ceiling, and the walls should probably all have different roughness values. So we can set up different textures for it. So let's take this material hallway one, copy material plus new material, paste material, this hallway floor and hallway ceiling. Hit tab. So let's select that ceiling, click the ceiling, hit assign. Choose the floor, hit floor, choose a sign. Nothing changes because all the materials are set to the same. I think the ceiling is going to be a little less reflective. So I'm going to pull that reflectivity down a bit and maybe also lighten up the side. The floor, I think, actually can use more. Not because it's more reflective, but just because in the image texture, this was a bit darker. So we're not getting, we're only getting some of the reflectivity in the highlights. Honestly, it looks good now, but I'm going to change it just, just because. And I'm going to go back here to this main one and walk it back a little bit more even. See, what I'm trying to solve for here is there's this kind of line here of what's reflective and what's not. And that's because in the image, it's pulling from highlights. And that's what we're using here in the color ramp. So something like that, that's giving us more, you know, it's allowing all of these subway tiles to reflect some light. If we look closely, I think this bump map is a little intense. Let's bring that to point one, a little more subtle. And some other things we can do now is add some 3D lights here. Let's just add cylinder. I think this light is made from like one tube and then like a reflective side, or is it three tubes? I can't really tell. Let's take these, hit the extrude it up. And that'll give us some space in here to add some new geometry. Go in here and label the material, turn it gray, adjust the metallic and roughness, something like this. Click on this cylinder. We're going to give it an emission texture. Change this drop down to emission. Mm -hmm. Turn that up a bit. So it's a bit brighter. I'm also going to go in here and adjust the shape of this reflective surface just so it fits in into this uh, cutout that I made in the ceiling a little bit better. You know, bring the sides down, adjust the scale, things like that. I'm also going to add more lights. I don't know if the original image texture was a reflection of one or three, like I said, um, but I'm just going to add three here. And then I'm going to make a new plane to add the grid. What I'm going to do is just duplicate the background plane Hit P, separate by selection, so it's a new layer, and this is just because it's, you know, has the right material, has the right orientation and scale and stuff instead of starting from scratch. Subdivide the plane a bunch. Then I'm going to add a wireframe modifier and make this grid. Adjust these settings here. Okay, clean this up a little bit. Okay, bring that up, move the lights up a little. Something like that is looking good. Um, but now I'm going to add kind of like an edge around the light so I'm going to add a plane, scale it, uh, extrude it a bit, cut out the middle, and, and there we go, something like that. Scale it properly. Add all these light materials, all these lights to a new collection. Let's line everything up just to stay organized. And now I'm going to go into this reflective surface and add a Musgraves texture to the bump map and also to the roughness just to like add some variation as if it's kind of, you know, a, a 
It's not a super flat reflective surface. It's been dented and things like that. And this looks pretty good. It's not perfect, of course. Uh, I wouldn't uh, use this 3D model as your close up, but as um, you know, some 3D geometry up in that light area where otherwise you would just have an image texture. Uh, this is gonna help when we do our uh, final shot and composite down the road. Now we're gonna take this collection and we can make a collection instance overhead light. Move it down. And what we can also do is go back into, now because these are instances of a collection, any changes we make to one will be reflected in them all. So one thing we can do is if we add another area light within the collection, it's going to appear over all of them. So let's line up an area light beneath here. Area lights are definitely going to give you fewer fireflies when you're using cycles. So that's why we're adding an area light in here instead of just letting the emission layer illuminate the hallway. If you're an EV, I think a point light for me tends to give a get a better result. Um, but since we're doing cycles, we're just going to add this area light to underneath each of the overhead lights uh, to kind of mimic the light that it's casting. So we can adjust the intensity here, uh, turn it up to see what it's doing, and then turn down the spread a bit just so it's more kind of pointed down. Uh, and then we can go in and fine tune it from there. And another reason to add these area lights is you can really control the lighting of your scene. So for example, if I wanted to make these overhead lights pink or something, uh, I can go in and change the color of the cylinder just by changing the one emission texture color. So change it to magenta and then click on the area light and make it also magenta. And that magenta light is going to be reflected within that hallway environment. I think the emission, I guess the bulb itself would be brighter. So turn down the saturation because it's so bright, it's turning white. But then we also have all the magenta spill of the light on the walls and stuff. And that's the kind of fine tuning you can do by setting up your own geometry with the your own colors here of the, of the lights uh, and the area lights as well. So if we change it to green, which is probably more what the fluorescent light would be anyways, you can see what that's doing. Another thing we can do here is see this line around the ceiling. I'm actually going to bring that in a little bit because that's going to make some extra shadows. So go in, splice along the edge there. It's not going to be perfect. Instead of hitting E to extrude it, if you hit Alt E, and then extrude along normals, then we can extrude that up along the normal faces and just pop that in a little bit. And then because that stretched the image texture a little bit, what I'm gonna do is create a new just dark texture, assign all of the faces of this new inset uh, to this dark texture, and that'll mimic, you know, kind of like the dark shadow inset of the ceiling. So now that we have all the basic setup of the scene, uh, we can go in and add a new camera. And this is going to be the camera that we're animating and using to uh, make our final shot. Make sure it's not inside your collection, because as you can see, then there's uh, a duplicates of your camera. So pull that out. Uh, but we're going to kind of line it up similar to where the camera is of the image. We're going to need to change the resolution. So first, the kind of X and Y scale is based on that F spy dimensions that we put in earlier. So let's change that to 1920 by 1080, 2398, and then just kind of play around, come up with a shot. We're going to finalize all this stuff later, but uh, here we can play with the camera. I'm going to go in and change this viewport display setting. I find that sometimes when I can see everything, I think that my shot is wider than it actually is. So this just helps me see like, nope, this is all that's in frame. And then I can plan accordingly. Like I'm probably gonna make this camera a little wider. And then on the last tutorial, there was this comment, which was a really good one, which is just that like adding your own 3D elements into a scene like this really helps sell it. So obviously we did a little bit of that with the lights. Uh, but now let's take this a step further and add in some more CG elements into this hallway scene to really make our shot feel feel real. So first I'm going to add something in the background there. Uh, this original image for this hallway was backlit with something bright. So I'm going to go back to Pexels, look for some type of like neon background thing. I'm going to use this image. Uh, the link will be in the description below. 
And let's just import that as images plain, set it to a mission, turn it up and just add it um, as a bright light in the background, adjust you know, the hue and the levels to match our scene a little bit. So I wanna add some turnstiles into this hallway. So on Pexels, I found this image of some turnstiles. Uh, I think that they have a simple shape and are gonna be a good candidate for making some CG elements from this image. So link will be in the description below for this as well. And to start with, I'm gonna bring this image into FSpy and we're kinda gonna do the process over again, getting our X and Y axes, uh, because then we're gonna kind of extrude this shape of these turnstiles in Blender and then adjust from there. So we're gonna repeat this whole FSpy process. You know, we're going to import our FSpy project. It's gonna bring in a camera with the background image set. And we're gonna follow the same process, you know, make a plane, extrude it to kind of get the shape of this side turnstile as much as possible. For right now, I'm gonna ignore all these glass dividers. Because all of these turnstiles are the same shape and because right now this material and this object is using a UV project modifier, what we can do is actually just duplicate this object, select everything and slide it over and because everything is lined up, the image is gonna project perfectly so we can slide the same shape over and have a second turnstile. You can see once you're done with this, it's not perfect. And so instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the UV project modifier. Once the UV project modifier is applied, you can see here that texture is now attached to the shape. So if I move this item around, the texture stays with it versus this other one over here where the modifier isn't applied. If I move this shape, the projection is gonna still change on it. So we need to apply that UV project modifier to then go into the UV map. Select our face, and when you see here, we can just move these points using G and get everything squared up perfectly. So then we're gonna end up with a shape that is the right size, that has this image texture perfectly projected on it. The arrow from the glass is projecting onto half of this turnstile. So to get around that, we're gonna add a mirror modifier. Change all your settings so it just mirrors the front half. You'll also need to tab into edit mode, select everything and move it along like the Y axis here, just to make sure that the center is aligned. Similar to before, we're gonna go into the shader editor and adjust the roughness and just try to match the reflectivity of the image itself. So making sure that, you know, the highlights of the image where there is a reflection, that's gonna be darker and the areas where there's no reflections, it's gonna be a little bit lighter. Because the entire object is obviously the same metal, the reflectivity should kind of be similar actually across the board. Uh, so we're gonna try to bring the contrast down a little bit just to mimic that. Then let's turn our hallway back on and line up these turnstiles. I'm just gonna set them here and here. And then for the glass dividers, I'm just gonna make a plane, extrude it a little bit, add a glass material. I'm gonna turn up the roughness and give it a color, I guess, blue, bevel the edges a bit, and then kind of duplicate it a couple times. Now I wanna add those arrows back in. So I'm going to cut a chunk out and then add another material to the plane, which is the same image material that's going on to the two turnstiles. And then I'm just going to assign this section to that material, go into the UV editor and line it up. Then I'm gonna follow that process for all of the doors, for the sections that have arrows, for the sections that have just the yellow bar across. So now that we have all of this stuff in the scene, we're gonna go in and now tweak the lighting. The lighting right now has been helpful reference just to get a sense of a lot of the reflections. But now let's do something that is kind of more aligned with the image and something that's really gonna help out our render. So one of the most obvious signs right now that you can tell that this is CG and fake is the edges where that turnstile meets the floor. So one, Easy solve is to just make this image backlit. So add a bunch of lights behind the turnstiles so that there's a bunch of shadows in front of them where we are seeing from the camera's perspective. And because of this hallway image, that's the natural lighting of the scene. You know, we have this bright image in the background. So let's set up some lights to give us that type of environment. And already as we're doing this, we can see this thing come to life a lot more. Go into your light settings and adjust the spread. Bring that down a bit. Change the color more to a greenish hue. 
I also want to more directly backlit. Uh, we are currently seeing the light through this glass material, but there is a way to turn that off. So if you go into your light settings and just uncheck multiple importance, it's not going to show up in those reflections. Future Alden here, uh, I do change this area light to a point light because I thought it looked cooler, but this is going to have some repercussions later in the render, which you're about to see. Now let's get our shot together. Uh, one thing that happens to me a lot is because if you see here, even though this is just in you know the shader viewer or whatever, it's not playing in real time. So whenever I can't watch something in real time, I tend to make my animations go a lot faster than they normally would. And it can be a real pain to render out your entire shot, realize that potentially taking hours to do that and then realize that your timing is off. So here's a quick way to avoid that, which I use when I'm doing all my shots. If you go to your X, your render settings here, set wherever you're going to save it and then change it to MPEG video, go into the encoder and choose QuickTime. And then if you go up here, click view, viewport render animation, it's going to render out the animation in whatever viewport this is. And then you have a QuickTime movie where you can just really quickly watch what the speed is of this animation. So I'm gonna look at this and make some adjustments. Also, I think one thing that this animation needs is a subject going through the doors. It's just not as quite as exciting without that. So I'm gonna go to Mixamo, which is an Adobe website for free. You can download a character and an animation and just have this SWAT team guy running through the doors. This could be its own tutorial and I'm not gonna go through it, but uh, for the sake of just having something in this shot, I'm gonna download it real quick. Bring it into Blender, parent it to an empty so that I can set him up and scale him properly into this scene. And then render out a couple tests for moving the camera. These Mixamo characters usually come in very shiny. So I'm gonna go disconnect the roughness and turn it way up just so that the character has more of a matte look and then do that for all of the materials in the character. Another thing I really wanna try is, you know, I'm gonna have this camera rush in following this running SWAT team guy. So I wanna add some camera shake. And a way to do that is to go into the graph editor add a noise modifier. I'm gonna do it for the X rotation here, up and down as if you're running with a camera. And then you can adjust the intensity and the speed of this. Now it would be shaking more in the middle of the run, not in the beginning and the end. So you can go into the restrict frame range. Here in the noise modifier, choose which frames you want it to start and stop, and then also adjust the fade essentially. So then it can, you know, start out as a smooth camera move, get a little jerkier as we're running and then slow down as, as if you were slowing down too. And after a couple tests, this is looking good. Because the SWAT team guy is moving, uh, I'm going to turn on the motion blur and then render out a frame just to see what that motion blur is going to look like. And I like it. It's not super intense, but it's definitely adding something. So I'm going to keep that on. I'm also going to add a depth of field uh, to the camera. What I like to do is, you know, choose where I want to focus it and then turn the F stop way down and then slowly bring it back up until I get a depth of field that I like. Because this is all 3D and I can do whatever I want, I'm going to actually change the color of the lights just to make it a little different than the image because why not? So uh, let's change all of these, this green hue to uh, a pink or something like that. I don't know. Try to make it a little more cyberpunk sci-fi or something. So I'm going to adjust the area light. I'm going to go in and change the emission texture on the cylinders that are the fluorescent bulbs. And uh, that's just going to match the background a little better too. So now let's set up how we're going to actually render out the shot. I've been using an EXR image sequence multi-layer and then setting it down to DWAB lossy. Now the lossless zip folder is going to be a massive file size. This DWAA and DWAB are lossy formats, but the file sizes are going to be, are going to be small like an image sequence. And I have noticed no loss in quality. And I've been using this workflow for uh, all the shots in my film itself. So now we're going to go choose which layers we're going to render out in this multi-layer format. So we're going to have the combined, which is this image, uh, the mist pass, 
and also the emit layer. So to see the mist, which is going to be like the depth, we have to go into a couple menus. So first in the world, um, we can see where the settings are. And then if you go into your camera viewport settings, that's where you can turn on uh, the visibility of this mist pass, and we can actually see the distance there. So then you have to go back into the world tab, set it to zero, uh, which the start will start right at the camera, and then I'm going to extend this out pretty far. And that's just going to give me all of the data of the distance so that if I want to add some more blur in the background or foreground, I can control for that based on the grayscale of this uh, image. And the emission layer is gonna be um, isolating all of the emission pieces. So I'm gonna show you um, how that looks real quick. So I'm gonna render out a quick frame. And then if you go up here, this is the combined image. If you do this drop down, you can see the mist layer. So you can see here how I can make a luma mat um, based on the distance. And then here we have just the emission layers isolated. But as I started rendering, I realized there were a couple more things I wanted to tweak. So I'm going to add some irregularity to the glass texture. So I'm going to take this grungy image texture also from Pexels, link in the description below, and add it to this glass layer. So I'm going to make a diffuse texture and then use the grunge layer as the factor between the glass and the diffuse. And I'm going to add a color ramp to adjust for that intensity. And uh, you can see the repeating pattern. So I'm going to go and click on different panes of glass. And if I click this little symbol here, I have a duplicate version of the layer and I can make an adjustment here that won't affect the other one. So I'm gonna go through and, uh, and do that for the other panes of glass. The other thing I wanna do is make the lights on these turnstiles glow. So I'm just gonna go in here, use the knife tool, cut out the X here and also the screen and copy the material, add a new one, paste the material and set it to emission. So I'm gonna do that for all of the turnstiles uh, just to add some more glow. I'm going to add another light just so I can see these yellow arrows a little better. And then it's time to render out our image. So inside After Effects, go to where your EXR sequence is saved. Check EXR image sequence. Once it's in here, right click and set the frames to 2398. The default is 30. And actually, I was wonder as I was recording this tutorial, I thought there's got to be a way to change that default setting, and there is. So if you go to Preferences, Import, you can make that setting here, and then all image sequences that you bring into After Effects will be whichever frame rate you choose, which in this case is 2398. So when you bring in an EXR sequence, you're going to notice that you can't see anything. So we need a couple of effects to even see what we're doing here. The first one is Extractor. So if you drop that in, there is this drop down menu, and those are each of the renders that we had chosen the combined, the emission, the mist, and there's also the noisy image default. The color is way off, so we're also going to need to add a color profile converter click linearize, and then that's going to bring our colors back to normal. The dynamic range is a bit wider than what we saw in Blender. It's fine to have more dynamic range because we can add an adjustment layer, Lumetri colors. I like to use the, the little sliders here, bring down the shadows, bring down the blacks a little bit, and then I'll bring the contrast back to what it was. And so now we can actually watch our render. <laughs> and oh my gosh, his feet are sliding like crazy. That is a little bit ridiculous. Uh, thankfully, this is not a Mixamo uh, <laughs> character animation tutorial. Um, I'm just going to leave that be for now, and let's just keep working on the shot. There are a couple uh, little things going on. There's some, like, warbling here on the edges of the glass. Uh, some other stuff we can tweak later. But um, let's first duplicate this EXR sequence, call one emission, call one... Mist, and let's start with the mist layer. So if I go to this drop down, choose mist, uh, we have a black and white image, a grayscale image of the depth. And if I put in levels and uh, crush this a little bit, I want to use a luma mat for that background uh, to add more blur to that background. Um, so add an adjustment layer. I like to use camera lens blur. It is it is a little more intense uh, in terms of rendering, but it does look more like a camera lens blur than just like a fast blur or something like that. And then set it to luma mat. And then 
we can also adjust that luma mat by adding a fast blur to the luma mat layer itself and then kind of adjusting our levels and that'll that'll soften that blur and then if we take our emission layer we can go to the drop down choose emission set it to add and then let's add a fast blur let's say five duplicate the emission layer add another fast blur let's say 15 and a third one let's say 40 and then let's bring the opacity down on all three of them and that's just going to give a nice highlight bloom to all of the glowing objects in the scene the other thing i'm going to do is add some grain so here is a website with some free grain i have my own grain packs but here's one you can download for free and i'm going to use it here i'm just going to use the 35 mil super 35 millimeter grain drop it in uh, set it to soft light, and that's just going to look nice overlaid on the shadows and the highlights and scale it down. Um, if you want it to be even more grainy, we can duplicate it, slide it over a frame. Uh, so we have, you know, a different frame of grain for each layer. This is the shot that we have so far, and it's looking for the most part pretty good. There are some issues and every time I render out a shot, especially from Blender, there are always things like this that come up. So it's just a matter of trying to assess what the issue is and then re-rendering stuff. So the best case scenario is when there's something that you can just fix in After Effects. But if not, we can re-render. So I think if I open up Blender again, I think that a lot of the wobbling you know, we have three issues. We have some wobbling on the edge of the glass, up in the reflection of one of the lights, and obviously the character. The character I'm not gonna worry about, but the other two, I think, because it's only happening in this one light, I think it's the reflection of one of the lights in here. And in Blender, sure enough, it's that point light uh, that I did because it's just shining in all directions. So I'm gonna change it back to an area light, direct it down away from those overhead lights because the other ones, uh, weren't having this issue and uh hopefully that solves that i'm also going to go to the glass here choose them all hit Control a scale this is going to normalize all the scale here um also i'm going to right click and choose shade smooth a modifier you can do is the edge split modifier so as you can see this is what the glass would look like you can see all the edges in that beveled round corner if you choose shade smooth it softens everything but then if you add edge shift um, it smooths out the rounded corner, but keeps the sharp corner. So I'm going to hope that that helps with some of the reflections along with changing the light and then uh, re-render this whole shot out. Okay, here's another version of the render. Changing that light definitely fixed the issue up in the overhead light. There's still some weird issues with the glass, of course. If this were going to go into a film and I was still having this issue, what I might do is make the edges of the glass dark instead of the glass material and or uh, just go in and track and do a full composite fix over the top of this. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's call it a day. And here's another render without the person at all. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you followed along and came up with your own scene, whether using these images or something else, tag me on Instagram, TikTok, or Twitter, because I wanna see what you came up with. Subscribe and turn on notifications and let me know in the comments what you wanna see a tutorial of, or if you wanna see something a little bit more in depth. I really appreciate all of your comments and suggestions. It lets me continue to be helpful to all of you so we can all get our films made.